This time on Pedalbox, we're extending the chassis, stabilising our intercoolers and trying to work out what we can do to fix the horrible camber on our front suspension. That's right, we're making the car wider, or at least in this case we're making the body wider and we're bringing the floor out to the edge of the car. That way we can have a completely seamless floor from one side to the other, front to back. We don't want to make the car any wider really, because we're already 30% wider than a standard Caterham. Now if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it would be great if you would do so. Have a look at our website, shop.pedalbox.show for merch, and patreon.com slash pedalboxshow if you'd like to help support our builds. So let's have a look at how we're going to build this floor. For a while, in the back of my mind, I've been working out how to do the sill or the rocker panel around the edges of the car. And I've wondered about using something like this, either two inch or in this case, one and a half inch tube. Now this will give us a nice wide radius around the bottom of the car that we can put panels up to and then the floor up to on the bottom. And I think it would look really good. However, using something this side add, adds a huge amount of weight to the very edge of the car. And instead, we're going to use one inch tube, still two mil wall thickness, but this represents about a 40% weight saving over this one and a half inch stock. Less weight right on the edge of the car is going to be more beneficial later on. So let's get to how we're going to design this and shape it up around the edge of the car itself. Fairly obviously, we're going to need some tube. These are three meter lengths of one inch stock, and I'm going to use these to just very roughly plan out where we're going to do this. So. One piece is fairly obviously going to come right down the outside edge of the car. So we'll just put that down there temporarily in an approximate location. Now, I don't particularly want to have this coming down here and joining it in just laterally off to this mount it isn't going to look particularly good. So my thought is to run this pipe across this way in off this mount diagonally out to meet this here. I've decided for the first try I'm going to try using the pipe bender. I had tried it before on some two inch pipe and I thought maybe it was just too big for what I was doing. I couldn't pack it because I didn't have enough sand and I actually didn't have enough sand to try for this one either. So this was another just hollow tube and I think that is what the problem has been because this one has kinked once again. So I'm going to cut this off, cut this off and then work out what angles I need to just weld this into the right position, make all the cutoffs and put the first part of our floor together. I've cut the two pieces of tube off from our little kinked section, which is a little bit ruined, and I've marked out on the table 140 degrees, which is what I measured off the car when I laid out in front of it as roughly the angle that we need. Now we're going to cut these tubes at 70 degrees each to make the 140 degree angle, and that way the ends of the tubes will both be the same shape. If we have a circle and we cut it on an angle, we're going to cut it into a bit of an oval. So if we have two ovals that are the same size going up against one each other, it'll be easier to weld and it'll look a lot better when we come to finish it. We've got this side tacked up and we've put it roughly in position where it will come off this mount at the front and aligned it front to rear. So now we need to start looking at this wing at the back and how we're going to attach this onto here. Now one mistake we made when we extended this, it's actually not quite wide enough still, but we can make that up in the bracketry we're going to build now. And the first thing we're going to look at is how we're going to extend the bottom of the chassis out to join up with this side rail. We're going to be coming straight out on the back corner of the original chassis, or at least what we have left of it, just where the old suspension would have mounted. We'll come out directly in line with the rear bar that goes across the back of the passenger cell and join that onto the sidebar. It also means we can deal with this corner of rust that's been bugging us for about a year since it started peeling away. The piece we need to add needs to be one inch longer than the wing at the moment. So we know that this is 12 and 3 quarter inches or 324 millimetres. So we need to add an inch or 25 mil onto that, plus enough to get us around the edge of our tube, just to fit around it and scallop in. Now we fit this up against the chassis onto our jig and held it in place with this 90 degree clamp which is really useful so that will hold it in there and we've made another one for the front so we can weld all these on together and start positioning the side rail. Also made the upright that comes off this and goes up to the wing which will make sure we haven't got any flex up and down in this one at least and help support it once we've got a bit more weight. 
sort of notched around the edge of here. This just fits in under there. And we'll get the exact position once this one is welded in and start getting this ready. Then we can mount our intercoolers later on. these two outriggers tacked into place we can offer the side piece up finally and work out exactly what angle we need to cut at the front to line up with the rest of the chassis. Well, we've made the slash cut onto here now so we can see how this fits properly. Just done a quick measurement from the inside edge of our new outside to the old outside and there's less than a millimetre of discrepancy between these two pieces which is fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Also gone around and finished up the weld round here, the weld round here, and on the back to make sure nothing's going to move. Now we can get this tacked in and we can move on to the next bit. So we've got both sides attached now, we can go on to finishing these wings. Now I've made these brackets out of a little piece of inch box that I just cut in half and then cut down to size. So split it and then shape this to be the same thickness as this. Now these are going to go on each side here on the top, I'm just going to weld them in and that will extend this out as far as we want it to come up to the edge which will allow us to face up against the inside of this tube for any bodywork, anything like that. And then we can work on putting the back on, close up the rest of this, that should be a good day's work. When we fixed the camber on the rear suspension, it really showed how bad the camber on the front was. It's about five to six degrees at the moment, and we've got our upper arms spun out quite far. We don't really want to try and adjust them with the hind joints any more than that. So it means we've got to make a change somewhere else, either by extending the arm wholesale or do something different with our little inserts that go into the top that replaced our suspension. Now when we made these we put the pivot dead centre exactly as it would have been in the top of a McPherson strut so we simulated just a very short version of our suspension tower. So this time we're going to weld a nut onto the outside edge which is going to give us an awful lot of adjustability around our kingpin angle. So it's really quick and dirty but we've got these welded onto the side, the bolts go down through the top and we can give these a test to see what it does to our kingpin angle and crucially we can measure it, what it's actually done. So we'll show you what it looked like before going through the centre with a horrible camber on it and we'll show you what it, this has done to it now. Now we've put our slightly hacky stub mounts back in, you can see the wheel is at a much healthier angle. It's, we've actually taken out almost all of the five degree of camber that we had on this side so we have a nice vertical wheel. However, it is a bit of a failure because we've taken some measurements and our kingpin angle is now about 26 degrees which is huge. Normally you'd expect something between 6 and 14 in a road car from what we've read so 26 is pretty massive so we need to adjust that and take that down a lot. Now to do that we're going to have to extend our arms out and that's going to affect our anti-roll bar linkage. Putting some custom ones in with hind joints is going to solve the majority of that problem. So in short this was a failure but at least we have a successful plan. Now we've got the front corner sorted, we can work on the back. I've got a piece scalloped and fit up against the inside of this tube, and I've got another piece here holding it perpendicular, so we have the rear plane of where the very inside edge of the wheel arch is going to be. So this will probably be where we'll attach the inner arch to. Now this comes across underneath the wing, and we need to attach it onto the inside leg of our chassis, so what was the original outside edge. And we need to join it from there onto the very front part of our rear frame, which holds the lower suspension arm mount. We do need to modify that mount, but that's not a job for right now. I'm going to put in the vertical piece which comes on the forward edge of the rear wheel arch, and I've just notched this wing extension out once again, same as I did on the front. Now last night before I cleaned up and put some paint on, I added one more piece to the chassis between these two new outriggers in order to keep them square. Now this doesn't go back directly in line, it actually comes in slightly to align with our rear suspension mount and some of the framework for the engine back there. Because the suspension attaches to the bottom of that, it's going to have to kick up slightly. And if we'd done it in one piece from here straight back to there, we wouldn't have made it. This rear outrigger would have been below it or we'd have had to lift that up and it wouldn't have matched up with the floor and it would have caused more problems. Now the last thing we're going to do before we wrap up this episode is add another intercooler mount because at the moment this is just hanging on one of these onto the back 
like this. So we're going to add another mount in for the back of the intercooler onto the new upright that we've just installed towards our outrigger and onto the wing. This will hold it nicely in plane and we'll add another one on the other side to match. The rear bracket design is really simple. It's just a piece of half inch tube with a notch cut out that fits around the peg with a little plate that comes across the top that bolts down and holds it all securely in place. It doesn't really need to be any more complicated than that, so we're going to weld this on with this in place, all lined up, and that should be that done for now. Well, I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. We've got the car back on its wheels, and these look really, really nice. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you have a look at our website, shop.pedalbox.show, you can see all of our merch that we've got available, hats, t-shirts, stickers, and more. And if you'd like to support the builds, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow. Now we've got these intercooler mounts in, we can mount the tube across the back that's going to join them together, and just put some P-clips onto this back rail, so that'll be a nice simple fix. Next time we're also going to sort out the upper arms on our front suspension. We're going to put some turnbuckles in so that we have adjustability and we regain back what we need to make the car work. Thanks again for watching, like the video and leave a comment, let us know what you think.